going on, Notre Dame fans? Mike Singer, Blue and Gold, with Wes Mitchell of Gamecock Central previewing the Notre Dame versus South Carolina Gator Bowl matchup that you can see on Friday. Uh, Wes, appreciate you joining. I'm curious just kind of the overall feeling from the South Carolina side of things heading into this game. Fan base, coaches, media, take this wherever you want, Wes, but – what would you say is the feeling from the, the the South Carolina side of things heading into this one? Yeah, Mike, there there actually is a great deal of excitement. I, I think the Notre Dame name, um, you know, that, that brand carries a, a lot of weight. I can remember a couple of days before the bowls were solidified, it kind of floated out there. Obviously, there's always some, you know, South Carolina could be at this bowl, this bowl could be this opponent, that opponent. And a couple of different opponents were out there and fans were going like, Illinois like do we really want to travel to Tampa to play Illinois that's not fun and then it floated out there hey Notre Dame and Jacksonville is a possibility and you kind of saw the light bulb go on and everybody started to get a little bit pumped up about that so from the moment that this possibility was floated out there fans were sort of looking forward to the potential to square off with a uh, you know a national and a historic brand so I uh, I think the fan base is excited South Carolina sold Their initial allotment, they asked for more tickets. They got them. They sold those out as well as far as the official Gamecock Club tickets. So um, I think it's going to be a big group of Gamecock fans down in Jacksonville. It's an easy trip from here too. Yeah, 8-4 and South Carolina team. That's, of course, Notre Dame's same record as well. Um, An offense that is – look, if if Notre Dame fans know one player on that offense side of the ball for the Gamecocks, it's Spencer Rattler. So tell us what – Ryler brings to the field, you know, as South Carolina's quarterback and what Notre Dame should just expect from that offense in general. Yeah, you know, he started to really put it all together the final two games of the year. And this is an offense that was very different, Mike, than what he did at Oklahoma. They're much more of a pro-style approach. You're going to see some under center. You probably would have seen quite a bit of two tight end sets, but they've lost um, several tight ends to uh, the transfer portal at this point. So, Probably won't see quite the same structure that we saw from this offense throughout most of the year. But they really, the last two games, they put it on Rattler's shoulders. They said they're going to kind of play a little bit more of an open style. They kind of simplified and and tried to throw the ball down the field a little bit more. And and it really worked. So I I thought his confidence was at an all-time high the last couple of games. He sort of was able – it kind of snowballed for this entire offense, I think. And a, a name that isn't really a national name yet, but that Notre Dame fans should know for South Carolina is number three, the receiver, Juice Wells. He and Rattler have really just d- developed a connection as this season has progressed. And Juice, especially with no Jaheim Bell, no Marshawn Lloyd, they've opted out or hit the transfer portal, I should say. Juice has sort of emerged as South Carolina's best offensive weapon as far as uh, Rattler's targets go. And that's an a name on the all name team right there. Juice Wells. Absolutely. Um, absolutely. That's yeah. You bring up an interesting point in from the Notre Dame side of things. No Drew Pine, no Michael Mayer, no Isaiah Foskey, you know, some key names for the Irish this season this year that, um, you know, are not going to be playing in the Gator bowl. Now, obviously you cover South Carolina, you know, a lot more about the Gamecocks than myself and Notre Dame fans watching this. So can you tell us about like how much different does South Carolina's roster look for this game? Um, you know, and not just like, oh, the, the freshman DB who no one had ever heard of, like some of the key names, you know, that aren't going to be there. Yeah, and I, I think you're right, man. Like you kind of put them in different categories. Some of them are more your traditional, hey, this guy's not playing, maybe isn't ever going to play, so he transfers out. Um, and then there are the guys that are more of your new age transfers where five years ago that guy's probably never leaving your team. And for South Carolina, the guys I would put in that category – uh, will be like I said, Marshawn Lloyd. He was their leading rusher. Now they he was banged up for a good portion of the like the final half of the year, so they kind of got used to playing without him. Jaheim Bell, however, who was kind of like their do it all tight end H back. They even were playing him at running back down the stretch in place of Marshawn Lloyd. He's in the transfer portal going to Florida State, so he's a big loss for them on the offensive side. You go to the defensive side, really, it's just been more about guys kind of trying to get ready for the NFL, going ahead, skipping the bowl game. Now, Notre Dame's offense, again, guys, it, it's it's difficult to kind of project exactly what it's going to be with these changes, but I think it's fair to assume that they're going to want to run the football. You know, so mm-hmm. how does how do you see South Carolina's front seven, um, you know, holding up against a Notre Dame rushing attack? Like, how, how good is that unit for the Gamecocks? 
Yeah, I, I think, Mike, that was a, um issue for South Carolina all season long was stopping the run. And down the stretch, uh, they just said, look, we're going to play man coverage on the outside, stack the box even more, and just force teams to show they can beat us down the field. I don't know if they have that option um, with the changes at cornerback going into this game. So we'll see. They they That's been probably their biggest Achilles heel all season long, stopping the run defensively. Um, Zach Pickens, another guy that opted out. Um, he's probably their best defensive tackle. They have now they have some depth on the defensive front, on the defensive line for sure. Um, Tonka Hemingway has been a good player for them. I wouldn't be surprised if they uh, played him more on the outside this game. He's kind of a, a guy who can swing back and forth between inside and outside. But they they've really played like a four two five. That's what they base out of. They really don't get out of that a whole lot. I'll be curious to see do they just based on the circumstances maybe try to get a third linebacker on the field to try to match up with a team that certainly is going to run the football. Like, I thought Clemson outsmarted themselves. Like, I thought they should have ran the ball 90% of the snaps against South Carolina because they, they've they been really good. If you if you get South – if South Carolina gets their opponents in third, third downs, third and longs, they actually have been pretty good at getting to the quarterback, even though their sack numbers don't say that. they Their, their sort of pressure numbers do. But – a lot of teams, when they've had success on Carolina, it's been, you know, second and four, third and one, and they're just grinding them out and staying on the field. I think that's the recipe for Notre Dame as well. All right, that is music to the fan uh, – or to the uh, – music to uh, Irish fans' ears. Um, and, and then just lastly, Wes, score prediction. You know, I'm not – I don't know if you're at the point of putting numbers up, but, uh, you know, Notre Dame's about a three-point favorite. Mm-hmm. Um, going into the game, which I think is certainly interesting. South Carolina's last two games obviously look fantastic, beating uh, Tennessee and Clemson. Where where do you kind of fall on uh, what you're predicting for this game? Yeah, I mean, bowl games, inherently very unpredictable. Um, I I do think there's going to be some points in this game just because, again, Rattler has been on fire, and I think Notre Dame will have success running the football. So I know know Notre Dame fans are probably curious to see what that offense is going to look like. Um, your former quarterback is now your quarterback again from the start of the year. So it, it'll be interesting to see what all that looks like. But I think points on both sides. I um, I have South Carolina winning 31-28, but I, I think it's going to be a tight game. And actually, I, I think this is kind of a fun bowl game. Like, not all the bowl games these days are fun, obviously. I think this one's a pretty cool matchup and should be a good atmosphere. Again, it'll be a lot of Gamecocks down there. So it'll be fun, man. I'll, I'll be curious to see what happens. All right, excellent insight from Wes Mitchell of Gamecock Central. Uh, appreciate you folks for watching to the end of this video. Please do hit the thumbs up on it and subscribe to our YouTube channel to check out all of our preview content for the Gator Bowl. Appreciate you folks, and we'll catch you next time.